Hi, I'm Sanyojita. Today I'm making three different types of vegan Indian breads: naan, pav, and bhatura. All using the same simple dough but different cooking methods: roasting, baking, and frying. Naan, pav, and bhatura make wonderful accompaniments to any Indian gravy. They are much easier to prepare than traditional wheat rotis. Be it making the dough or rolling and roasting or baking. I'm using an adaptation of the no need bread making method. Serve these breads for everyday meals or special occasions. For a whole wheat version, use my dough recipe from the tandoori roti video and the cooking methods from right here. Okay then, let's get started. This method of making dough is an adaptation of the no need bread making method. I find that weighing everything is the easiest, but I have given cup measurements too. The dough is quite forgiving and the measurements are not exact. Oops, I dropped a little too much water. I'm going to remove some. This is good enough, approximately half a liter. Add the yeast. I'm using a half teaspoon measure. Add salt. and stir to dissolve. Add the all-purpose flour. Since the same dough is used for all three breads, make more than you need for the day. And if you're making chana bhatura, for instance, you can also make some pav for the next day. They keep well for a couple of days. I like to add a little whole wheat flour just for the texture but if you don't want to do that you can use 650 grams of all purpose flour stir gently until all the dry flour is incorporated no kneading or whisking required a stiff narrow spatula helps if you want to make whole wheat naan pav or bhatura Use the dough recipe from my tandoori roti video. I will post it in the description box as well. And use the cooking technique and methods shown here. As you may have noticed, this dough has no sugar and no fat. The dough is all done. 3 minutes and 20 seconds and we didn't even touch it cover it and keep it in a warm draft free place for proofing it takes about an hour and a half depending on the ambient temperature it's been one and a half hours the dough has risen and is quite airy this is how it was before proofing give the dough a few tugs and pulls to release the air this mimics the action of a dough hook as you can see the dough is quite sticky as it should be add some dry flour by the tablespoon just to make it manageable not to make a stiff dough take the dough out on a floured surface oh i forgot to flour my bowl and you can see the problems of not doing so Shape the dough into a ball like so. Pat it down to form a disc using small amounts of dry flour if your palms get too sticky. This dough makes 16 pav or bhatura or 12 naan. I'm first going to make two halves of this dough and then show you how each half is is to be divided into smaller portions. 6 or 8 depending on whether you're making naan or pav and bhatura. I'm making naan first, so let's divide this dough into six portions. Flatten the ball into a disc and divide it into three, about 120 degree angles. 
then divide those into two. Now you have six portions. Don't worry if the portions are unequal. You can adjust them while making the balls. Dividing by six is a bit harder visually, but with practice you'll pick it up in no time. This portion seems a little bigger than the others. Remove some dough and add it to the smaller one. Roll each portion into a ball like so, keeping the top smooth and the joints at the bottom. Let the balls rest for about 10 minutes. I am showing you a method to make naans to mimic the authentic tandoor version. You need a tawa, unseasoned iron. Let it get nice and hot while you are rolling out the naan. You will need some dry flour and about half a cup of water and a basting brush. You can also use your hands instead of the brush but then you have to keep cleaning and drying them. I am going to show you a couple of different shapes. The first is round with a little bit of a tail as they are in the tandoor. Roll the ball into a thin circle and pull it on one end to make a little tail. Apply water on this top side of the roti. The water allows the naan to stick to the tawa. Now it is ready to go on the hot tawa. Wet side down. Pat down to make sure it sticks to the pan completely. It will start puffing almost immediately. I think it's stuck. Flip the tawa to roast the top side of the naan directly on the flame. Move around the tawa to allow the naan to roast evenly. There, it's all done. It took about 2 minutes to roast. This is the underside and then the top. Apply ghee or butter on the naan if you want and store in the hot box. I have been quite liberal here. But remember there was no oil or ghee in the dough. Well, I have made one silly mistake here. But it will be a good one to show you what not to do. This ghee that is left on the tawa is going to be a problem. Now I am going to roll the second naan. It is going to be an oval shape. I am just going to run through the rolling portion. It is the same. Now to roast it. Oops, the ghee did not allow the roti to stick to the tawa and so it fell off. Is that a disaster? Not at all. The naan will still be good when both sides are cooked on the tawa as you will soon see. It may look a bit different. Besides, who wants to keep flipping a tawa on a regular basis? This method is best used occasionally. For frequent preparation, it is best to roast both sides on the tawa. Besides, for an electric stove, that is how you have to do this. You can even skip applying the water on the bottom if you want. Not bad at all. In fact, it is quite good. Now we will make a garlic naan. Roll the roti just like a plain naan. Then press in the crushed garlic and coriander leaves. And finally roast as you would a plain naan. I am going to run through this procedure. Here, I have taken one of the naans I made today to show you the texture. It's been about 45 minutes since I made it. See how easily it tears. It's not chewy or tough. Okay, that's it for naan. Let's move on to pow. As I mentioned before, pow are pull-apart rolls. 
we will continue from the first proofing that is after one and a half hours of making the dough i'm going to show you how to portion half of that dough into eight parts just like this divide into two then into four and then divide each quarter into two parts and we have eight since i want to make 16 pow for this tray i would need all the dough that we rolled made earlier make the dough balls as usual smooth on top joints on the bottom and place them in the in a well greased pan or a parchment paper lined pan as i have used they should be very close to each other so that when they rise they will stick to each other at this time you can turn on the oven at up 225 degrees centigrade it's quite hot and while it is reaching temperature the pow will go through their second proofing just cover and set aside for about half an hour as you can see the pow have risen and stuck together and the oven is preheated i'm going to bake the pow for about 30 min 35 minutes this is how they turn out in my oven they should sound hollow on tapping that's how you know that they are done and they should be relatively brown on the top i'm going to lightly glaze them with ghee it's an optional step especially if you're going to uh, slather them with butter for pav bhaji take the slab of pav out of the pan and place it on a rack to cool remove the parchment paper if you have this is how they look up close let's check out the inside i'm going to tear one and show you how soft and fluffy it is drop a dollop of butter on the warm pav and eat it right away you can also serve pav as an accompaniment to a spicy gravy such as this chicken shakuti now for the bhaturas bhaturas can also be made with kulcha dough which is leavened with baking soda and contains yogurt this version is vegan the kadhai needs to be wide enough to hold the bhatura comfortably set it to heat on medium high heat while you make the balls I'm going straight to the rolling part. The balls are the size of the power balls. Since the dough is quite wet, we will roll it with the dry flour. To make it easier to handle, you can use a little less water while making the bhatura dough. Roll as thin a roti as you can, but not so thin that it will tear as it puffs. Drop a little flour into the oil to check if it's hot enough. it should sizzle immediately this oil is ready and i'm going to drop the rolled roti in joint side down gently press it down to allow it to puff fully and fry until it's golden brown it should puff up fully like this If the oil is not hot enough, it will remain kind of flat. If the oil is properly hot, as I have shown you, it takes only 1 minute to fry a bhatura. I'm going to run through the frying of one more. It is slightly smaller in diameter, therefore a bit thicker. And I've also fried it to a deeper golden color. This picture was taken about 30 minutes after frying. Like any fried bread, bhatura will not retain its shape and crispness when cold, but they will still taste delicious served with chana or any other spicy gravy. Lightly warm it in a microwave when you want to eat it. But that's all for today. Check out the accompanying video of Pav Bhaji right here. Please hit the like button if you find this video useful and do share it with your friends. I will see you next week. Thank you for watching.